Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be a very important topic, not only because it was one of the first videos I ever did on this channel, um, but also because it's generally just good to know how to keybind, how to keybind across multiple characters, and where you can improve. Whenever someone comes to me for coaching lessons, one of the first things that I tend to take a look at is their UI and their keybinds, uh, because that can tell a lot about what some of the issues may stem from. For example, if I look at a log and they have like a two or three second gap where nothing's happening, where they should be pressing a button, I immediately tend to look at keybinds. Um, why are you not pressing the next buttons? And more often than not, it's because it's either not bound to any button, so they have to click it, or because it's bound to a very inaccessible keybind that they probably won't even want to press and they'll just click it instead. For today's video, I teamed up with Wowhead to bring you a written guide as well. Uh, you can find the link to it in the description box below. A lot of the information is the same, but it's just in a written format. So it's a lot easier to reference um, once you've listened or watched this video. So with that out of the way, let's get straight into the guide because there are a few things that I want to talk about before we talk about like which buttons to keybind to what abilities. Keybinding is probably the hardest process to change about how you play the game, especially if you're used to the default keybinds, uh, just one through nine or one through the equal sign, um, and are used to clicking everything else. Keybinding every ability is going to be a big change. And most players who want to change their keybinds end up changing them. Then like a few days later or a week later, they're like, I can't do this. And they just revert back to their old habits and just go on like nothing happened. So to avoid that from happening, there's a few things that you can do. The first way of approaching this is to only change a few keybinds at a time, like change your one or two of your core rotational abilities at a time until you get used to it and then keep changing them until you've changed all of your keybinds. This process will take a lot of time, but it's way less intrusive um, and it's not going to feel like you're trying to learn a whole new game that you've never played before. The other approach, of course, is just change all of the binds and force yourself to actually press them, which will mean that each time you go to press an ability, you will most likely have to look at your action bar. Okay, I bound this spell to this button, then you press it. This means that in the first week, first two weeks, your gameplay is going to be very slow and it's going to feel very awkward because it is essentially like learning a whole new game until you develop that muscle memory and then you don't have to look at your action bars anymore. So those are the two ways of approaching it. Try out um, depending on what works for you. Just make sure that you don't jump into it and then get discouraged because changing your keybinds takes a long time. Whenever I overhauled my entire keybinds, it probably took me over a month to get comfortable with them, and that varies uh, person to person. I will break this guide down into sections, and the first section is movement and targeting. So for moving your character, most people have WASD keybound, which is the default. However, your A and D keys should be keybound to strafe left and strafe right instead of turn left and turn right. This will essentially free up your Q and E keybinds to be used for abilities instead of strafing. Um, and also you will find that it also frees up your mouse to actually use it for targeting, um, you know, moving your, your camera around and stuff like that instead of having your mouse hovered over your uh, action bars. For targeting, the only keybind I have for targeting is tab, and I suggest you just leave it like that. Tab targeting is pretty useful when you're switching between two targets or so. But as soon as you have more targets and you're doing like an AOE pool, I wouldn't recommend using tab to target your enemies because it becomes a little bit unreliable and at that point you're better off just actually clicking their nameplates. Like I mentioned in the article, S for moving backwards or backpedaling is kind of controversial. PvP players will always recommend you to just get rid of this keybind completely and use it for an ability instead. In PvE, there are situations where you will want to backpedal. Whenever you're trying to position a mob in like the perfect spot as a tank, for example, or if you're a DPS trying to make micro adjustments to your positioning, it is sometimes easier to backpedal instead of strafe just because your character moves less um, or smaller increments each time you tap the button. But other than that, everything for movement is pretty much the same other than strafing. 
Now let's talk about which keybinds you should actually be using on your keyboard for your rotational abilities. I recommend using pretty much Q, E, R, and F. And then for the numbers, um, you can pretty much use one, two, three, and four. Depending on the size of your hands, you might be able to reach five as well. But if you need to stretch your fingers at all to reach the five key, then I probably wouldn't use it for a rotational ability. You can still use it as a key bind, just not for a rotational ability. These are pretty much the buttons that your core abilities will go on that you're essentially constantly pressing throughout the fight. And then for abilities that you might only be pressing like once or twice an encounter, you can use the slightly further key binds. So tilde, five, uh, TG, and then this whole bottom row is actually a pretty decent um, set of key binds. If you are using Discord push to talk, binding that to C, V, or B are great key binds because most people rest their thumb on the spacebar. And with the tip of your thumb, you can press all three of those key binds without ever having to actually take your thumb off the spacebar. So you can press both of those or just one of them if you want. So these key binds are great for abilities that you're not pressing constantly, but you might still press them one or two times in a fight. Next, let's talk about the modifiers because modifiers play a huge role in increasing the amount of key binds that you have available. So shift, control, and alt are the three modifiers that you can use. So the way modifiers work is that you press the button and then while you're holding the modifier button, you press another button and that essentially becomes a new key bound. So if you have something like an ability bound to E, let's say spell number one, then you can bind a completely different ability to shift E, then a completely different one to control E, and a completely different one to alt E if you want. Um, if you do that, it becomes a little bit chaotic. So I recommend keeping it kind of simple with modifiers. Use as few modifier buttons as you can, um, just to keep it consistent and so you don't have to think about it too much because pressing one button with your finger is a lot easier than pressing a combination of two buttons. Um, so for example, on my keybinds, I use shift as my focus modifier. So if I have my interrupt bound to F, then shift F will be my focus interrupt. Um, and that goes for all the spells that have focus variations and then spells that don't have focus variations, um, I typically just have a hole in their ability. So for example, on my number one key, I have Howling Blast bound. And on my shift one key, I have my Pillar of Frost bound. So it's a completely different ability. I recommend only using modifiers for your most convenient keybinds. Like you wouldn't want to keybind something to like shift six because that's going to be very hard to reach. But shift Q, shift E, shift R are all super easy keybinds to press, um, even though you're pressing two buttons. So with modifiers, keep it simple and pretty much only put abilities on modifier keybinds that you're gonna use a few times a fight. Um, nothing that is actually a rotational ability. Before we move on to the mouse section, I have one last thing to mention for keyboards. You can remap your caps lock key to something else. Um, I think I have it remapped to one of these little side buttons. And caps lock is a great keybind. And unless you're constantly typing in all caps, you probably don't need access to the caps lock function. So you can just move it to somewhere else on your keyboard and you can do that under the actions menu of whatever software you use for your keyboard. Lastly, whenever you are using some of these keybinds, you will essentially have to unbind their previous function or their default uh, function. And typically that means that you should just move it to somewhere else on your keyboard. The keys that I have highlighted right now are pretty good alternatives um, for like little menus that you need to pull up. The function keys are pretty much not used in this game other than the last few. Um, so, you know, like your character panel, your bags, stuff like that, that would, you would normally use on one of these key binds that we have at the bottom. You will have to move that somewhere else. And that might also take a little bit of getting used to, but in the long run, you're never using those in combat. So they're much less important key binds to actually have close to your movement keys. All right, next, moving on to the mouse. Um, there are essentially two main types of gaming mice that you can use for WoW. Uh, most people either use a default gaming mouse that typically has the two side buttons and then one extra button behind the scroll wheel or the MMO mouse that has the two buttons behind the scroll wheel and typically 12 buttons on the side. 
So regardless of which mouse you use, uh, some of these keybinds will be the same for both. Um, and obviously some you can only use on a MMO mouse. First going over the general keybinds, your scroll wheel can be used for an ability, both scroll wheel up and scroll wheel down. By default, those are bound to zooming in and out um, with your camera. You can simply change that to something else. Um, for example, I have it changed to Alt, scroll wheel up and down. Um, but by default, scroll wheel is a great keybind because it's easily accessible. And each time you scroll your uh, wheel, it's going to input that command a ton of times. Compared to pressing a button on your keyboard, which will only input the command once, using your scroll wheel will spam and keep pressing that until it goes through. So for example, I have my health potions and my health stone on scroll wheel up and scroll wheel down. You can also use a scroll wheel click by pressing down on it. However, if you have up and down bound, I wouldn't use this just because whenever you try to click it, you might end up scrolling up and down and use whatever those uh, are bound to. So either bind up and down or click, um, but either one of those is a pretty good key bind. Then the button or the two buttons behind the scroll wheel also pretty decent. Um, since I didn't really need extra key binds, these are bound to my character panel and my bags. Uh, keep in mind that by default, these are used for profile switching or DPI switching. So you will have to go into the actions tab of your mouse and actually change these to like a random button on your keyboard that's not used for anything else. Um, you can use either the numpad keys on the right side of your keyboard. Just make sure that numlock is on, otherwise they won't work. Or you can pretty much use any other button that's on the right half of your keyboard since you typically won't be reaching those with your left hand. If you're using a gaming mouse that only has the two extra buttons on the side, those are great buttons to have rotational abilities bound to. Uh, those will be mouse button 4 and 5, I believe. So moving any abilities off of your rotation off and off your keyboard onto your mouse will actually make it easier for you to do your whole rotation by kind of splitting up how much you have to move your left hand fingers um, by delegating some of those button presses to your right hand. And then on an MMO mouse where you have 12 buttons on the side, these are typically by default bound to just numbers one through zero and then minus and equal sign. So the same thing that your default WoW keybinds would be. In most situations, you can just leave it as the default. Um, only change these to something else. For example, a great thing to change them to is just the numpad but only change it if you're used to pressing the number keys with your left hand uh, instead of just the letters around your WASD movement keys. So for me, for the longest time, I left these as the default just because there was no need to have so many keybinds. Um, but as we're going to Shadowlands, we're getting some new abilities. So maybe you will be running out of keybinds. In that case, you can change these to be uh, different numbers than what their default action is. And for that, again, you will just have to go into the actions menu of the software you use. You also have to keep in mind that on your MMO mouse, your thumb will usually be resting on the first, maybe second column of numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, and six um, in this picture. So you want those buttons to be your most often used abilities and the buttons that are towards the back of the mouse to be less often used abilities. Um, to the point of even like out of combat abilities you can put on here. Um, this is because you don't want to constantly be moving your thumb between the back of the mouse and the front of the mouse. You'd rather just have, you know, your thumb sitting on the first and second column like 90% of the time. And then from time to time, you'll have to move it back slightly to reach the back two columns. But in general, you shouldn't really have like core abilities bound to seven through 12 they should be put on one through six. For the last section, I wanted to cover a few tips and tricks, I guess. There's not that many, but pretty much you need to keep a few things in mind. If you're playing multiple characters, always keybind similar abilities to the same button. So your interrupt should be on the same button across all your characters, your taunt, um, etc. Also in rotational abilities, a lot of abilities have very similar functions or uses. For example, if an unholy DK keybinds their outbreak, which is like their maintenance dot to Q, then an affliction warlock or a destruction warlock 
should keybinder emulate to queue because they serve very similar purposes. They both put up a dot on the target that you need to maintain from time to time. Um, so drawing those kind of parallels between abilities when you play multiple characters will make it a lot easier to get used to and adapt to new keybinds whenever you start playing new characters. If you have an MMO mouse, it is also a good idea to have your core rotational abilities split up between your keyboard and your mouse because that will make it so you have to move um, the fingers on both your hands less in general because, for example, if ability 1 is keybound to Q, then ability 2 is keybound to 1 on your mouse, then you can just alternate between using your left and right hand instead of having to constantly move your fingers around, um, basically like playing the piano to reach the next ability that you're supposed to be pressing. But that pretty much wraps up my keybinding guide. Thank you so much for watching. And please keep in mind that keybinds are largely subjective. So while I can't give you specific advice on what ability to put on which button, so hopefully some general information as to which keybinds you should be thinking about using and what type of abilities should be going on those keybinds will help you set up your new characters for Shadowlands. Again, if you want to check the written version of this guide over on Wowhead, you can find the link to it in the description box. And if you'd like to support my work, you can also check out my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.